Welcome to the Voice Coach Podcast, here for all your speaking voice training and guidance. My name is Nick Redman and I am offering you all sorts of nuggets of wisdom on how to keep your voice in good working order and a true representation of who you are. So if you're a podcaster, presenter, actor, speaker or voiceover artist or a general voice geek, you're in good hands. Shall we get started? Hello there. <clears throat> I'm coming to you live with a cold. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm live right now. You'll obviously be listening to this in the future, but you know what I mean. Oh, the joys. <laughs> Clearly my brain's working really well, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to harness this. I'm going to own it and I'm going to do an episode about how I've been, uh, well, dealing with speaking whilst I'm in this hideous state. Sorry. <coughs> so, It'll be a brief episode, uh, but here are my top tips on how to work with your voice when you have a feckin' cold and your job is speaking. Because let's be honest, that's probably why you're listening, because you're a speaker. <laughs> so, number one, uh, manage client, listener and colleague expectations. So don't expect to do as much as you usually do. You know, like this happens to us all. We get ill. I'm luckily at the end of it, but oh my goodness, it's been awful. You just need to be honest and tell whoever is relying on you that you might need another day. You might need a regular breaks or a bit of time to reset and refocus your voice throughout whatever it is you have to do. Like I had a voiceover drop in yesterday for a regular in-store gig I have with an Irish shop and I just didn't sound like myself and I thought this is awful. So I told the client who I've worked with for years that I needed another day and I'd get it to them as soon as they could. And, you know, surprise, surprise, they were very understanding. <laughs> and then I got up today and I did a lot of things to uh, get me in the space that I could sound more like myself. Now, look, I'm not making a huge effort to sound to my best right now because <laughs> I need to get this podcast episode out to you. And in this instance, podcast land, the quality of the information is more important than the quality of my speaking voice. You know me very well by now, perhaps, if you've been listening for all 70 episodes. And I'm sure you can give me the grace that this isn't how I usually sound. <laughs> but my message is loud and clear and my commitment to getting the help to you is sturdy. Right, so here we go. Up your feckin' hydration. Like, I can't say it enough. Mucus is a bitch. <laughs> And it gets sticky as heck when the germs invade. So drink, drink, drink all the way through. Drink, 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 drink. And then drink a bit more. And then also drink some more like tea, water, juice, whatever you can get your hands on. Imbibe some fluids all the time, especially first thing in the morning, because you might notice you'll feel worse in the morning. Why is that? Because you've not drunk all night because you've been asleep or tossing and turning because you can't breathe through your nose. Good times. Uh, the other way, of course, you can stay hydrated at a vocal fold level rather than just systemically with all the fluids you're taking in is uh, tip number three, which is nebulizer. You need to nebulize some 0.9% isotonic saline solution. That's as sciencey as I get, really, <laughs> with this advice. I've got a vocal mist nebulizer, which is great, and also a it's called Burrer, B E U. R E R sounds great in a Northern Irish accent. Burrer, Burrer, nebulizer, which is available in the UK. The saline solution that gets misted out at you through those nebulizers, more so than steaming, even though steaming is good for soothing and cleansing the oral and pharyngeal spaces, the nebulized saline actually gets absorbed by the vocal folds at a cellular level. So it impacts the mucosal layer of the vocal folds more efficiently and effectively, and therefore, big word alert, reduces the phonatory threshold pressure more successfully, aka makes your voicing speaking and easier, which is what we need that layer of mucus to do. And apparently, if the research is to be believed that after a five or ten minute nebulize session, your phonatory threshold pressure, the PTP, will be reduced for about an hour. So it will just make things easier in terms of the literal creation of the sound. And if you're interested in the science, actually check out the Vocal Mist website for more on that. Not an ad, I just like them. Taking a drink now because I'm click central. There you go, that's a live mouth swill there. Let's put on it as an extra bonus tip. Swill that mouth. <laughs> this is horrible to listen to, I'm sure. I apologise. Normal service will resume. 
next episode. Next thing I want to suggest is give yourself a wee facial. <laughs> Lymphatic drainage massage on the face. Always my saving grace when I feel a bit bunged up. And it's just a set of points on the face where the sort of nebulous of the lymphatic system kind of gets a bit bunged up. If you massage it, it really helps to get the gunk moving away from the sinuses and opening up those passageways again so you don't sound quite as like this as you may have done or de nasal or adenoidal or whatever you want to call it. So it's a process of particular massaging on the face and if you give it a wee Google on YouTube you'll find some brilliant videos on lymphatic drainage massage. Really works for me. Next thing is if you're on cold medication, which I know we sometimes need to endure it, just really again up your hydration please because the decongestants in those over-the-counter cold and flu remedies dry up the mucus, even the good stuff that we need on the vocal folds. So you may feel a bit scratchier at the voice level, even if it's helping you feel clearer at the nose level. Stay away from decongestants if you can, but I know sometimes they do feel necessary because it's horrible feeling all bunged up. Another thing about feeling bunged up is, if you can, try and build moments of active nose breathing into your day, even if it feels like nothing's coming through, (laughs) just to try and encourage space and movement in those passages and to remind your brain what you expect of it, really, and your body what you expect of it. Like, close one nose, sorry, nostril. (laughs) Close one nostril, breathe in through it. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Sexy. Hope my husband listens to this. And then out the other one. (laughs) It is hard when you're bunged up, but it does help. Excuse me while I have a blow. God, the things we do with our lives, eh? Right, the next thing is more for vocal fold level if you're feeling a bit mucusy and throat cleary down there is some semi-occluded vocal tract exercises I've got a whole episode on SOVT exercises so check the link in the show notes if you haven't had a chance to listen to that one but doing some of those exercises can really help clear a bit of the vocal fold mucus get things moving again it's anecdotally successful in many speakers and a lot of my clients and me if nothing more I'm not sure if there's any official research on it but it definitely feels like it gets the mucus moving a bit so like a lip trill a puffy fricative glide or a something that's really safe to get the vocal folds going oh see that sounds nicer already i need to take my own advice a bit more next one is vocal tract release work so speaking's going to be more effort If you're tired and exhausted and bunged up, you'll be thinking a lot more about it. Your brain will be working hard. So keep releasing the vocal tract during regular breaks. So stretch out the tongue root, release the jaw, release the lips, do a few yawns to get those pharyngeal constrictor muscles released. Next thing again in the release category is neck and shoulder release. If you're sneezing and coughing loads and you're, you've got that kind of physical woe is me repose where your shoulders kind of drop forward and you kind of hunch over like a moody teenager, just me, <laughs> release the neck and the shoulders regularly if you can. Cheeky bit of semi-supine, always nice. Although you might want to prop your head up if you're feeling a little bit bunged up. And then finally, please get some rest. <laughs> if you can take a day off, just do. Like I saw this coming And then it arrived and I just had to take Friday off. I just had to. So I did. Uh, Both vocally and bodily as well. Like get some early nights, nap in the day if you can. Everything's going to feel like more effort. So just take it easy. Remove stuff you don't need to do and, you know, find some space for you to binge something on Netflix while you're rehydrating and nebulizing (laughs) and crying into your steamer. And you know what? This sort of feels like a really good time to say make some space for yourself so you don't get ill in the future. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. It happens to everybody I know, but if you're sick of getting sick, (laughs) if it happens a lot and you think your body and your mind and your voice needs a break, then I am taking calls for the next Ultimate Voice Getaway Retreat, which is happening here in the UK from the 29th of September to the 2nd of October. Isn't it nice when I can monopolise and exploit my illness to help promote a wonderful thing that you can do. (laughs) It's a bloody lovely retreat. Like basically everyone comes and hangs out with me in the Northumbrian countryside. We do wild swimming, we do walking, we do eating lots of nice food, both in our house and from local places. And we go out to the pub 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we also do two days of glorious voice work. I always say that as the end bit, because to be honest, it's such a beautifully holistic, full body mind immersion experience that the voice work, although obviously a huge part of it, <laughs> is uh, sometimes feels actually secondary. <laughs> but it's great. We spend two days really releasing tension, exploring the voice, making noise, breathing, lots and lots of breathing and just having a bloody lovely time. You don't even have to worry about anything really like you get all your accommodation and the travel into and from the gorgeous studio that we do those sessions in, which is in Northumberland National Park near Hadrian's Wall, which is uh, basically where I live. Um, all your food's included, like there's hot tubs, there's an in-house bar, everything's en suite. It's just glorious. Plus we make some noises and <laughs> explore our voice. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, it is good. This is the fifth one I've done. And honestly... We have such a nice time. Anyway, look, there's three spots left on this retreat in September and I think your voice would love you for it. So pop to the link in the show notes to book in a wee chat with me about coming. And that's it. That's all I've got for today. Join me next time for some hopefully slightly clearer voice. <laughs> Woe is me. Where's the nebulizer? Oh, there it is. <sighs> And breathe. <laughs> I'm going to go back to bed. Thanks for listening to the Voice Coach Podcast. For even more support with your speaking voice, head on over to our free community, The Voice and Accent Hub on Facebook. See you in there.